Hey, we're Jake and Tatina, except we're not Jake and Tatina in this video because Jake is in Portugal and Tatina is in London. London, baby! Traveling around with Corinne. So in this video, we're Tatina and Corinne. <laughs> I'm so excited to share today's adventure with you because I am not kidding. This was my favorite day of my London trip so far. Welcome to Brighton, a colorful, quirky seaside town on England's southern coast. And these are Brighton's Lanes, a charming little mix of narrow alleyways full of shops, bars, restaurants, and cafes. We stopped in one of their cafes and grabbed some breakfast before heading to the Brighton Beach and Pier. Brighton Palace Pier was opened in 1899 and is one of the three originally constructed piers still standing. It's been acknowledged as one of the finest piers ever built and millions of pounds have been invested in repairing it and maintaining it over the past decade. The pier is free to visit and right after you walk on, you hit the Palace of Fun, a huge building full of new and old style amusement arcade games. This whole pier is 1,722 feet long, and if you keep walking past the Palace of Fun and food stands, you get to the amusement park area at the end of the pier. There's tons of fairground rides, including a traditional painted carousel and even a couple of roller coasters. You get a great view of Brighton's coastline from the pier, and walking on the pier through all the old penny arcades and carnival stalls, it felt like such a throwback. I definitely think the pier is worth a visit. Just watch out for the swarms of seagulls. After we got off the pier, we took a walk along the seafront because we wanted to see the remnants of the West Pier. This was opened in 1866 and closed years later after storms, the war, and a fire ravaged it. A quick walk over in contrast, we saw the most famous brightly colored things in Brighton, the beach huts. Owners get to paint the doors of their hut, so each one is super cheerful and bright. You might be able to rent one, otherwise you've got to go on a long waiting list to sign up for a five-year tenancy agreement at 1000 700 pounds. I think we'll stick to admiring them from the outside. You can see there's cliffs way out in the distance. That's where Kurt and I are going. The Seven Sisters Hike. From Brighton, we took a 50 minute bus ride to the Seven Sisters. Since we're just on a day trip here from London and it was already late in the afternoon, we picked a shorter route to get to the cliffs. The bus dropped us off at the car park and we walked a few minutes on the road to get to the trailhead. You blend right in. <laughs> That's the Cuckmere River, and we're going to be walking on a trail right alongside her until we reach the ocean and the cliffs. Okay, we've reached the trailhead and we're starting our 30 minute walk through the English countryside. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's an overcast day, but the soft grays and blues from the clouds are such a pretty complement of color to the grassy green landscape. <laughs> Corinne is smart and she brought a hair tie to put her hair up. I did not. So we hiked up around these little Coast Guard cottages and the view here is insane. Before this, I had heard of England's famous White Cliffs of Dover, but never the Seven Sisters. I've never been to the Cliffs of Dover, so I can't really compare the two, but I can say that the Seven Sisters chalk white cliffs overlooking the sea were just absolutely stunning. Corinne and I had to get some photos in front of the cliffs before we left.
it started raining, so we're gonna head back now and see how to take the bus to get back. We didn't have time to get closer to the Seven Sisters Cliffs today, especially with the weather turning bad, but one day I definitely want to come back and walk up to the top of them. We are soaking wet now. <laughs> We're doing fine before then. Soaking wet, soaking wet. See the color difference of my jeans. <laughs> well, we made it back to the bus stop, hopped on the next bus, drove past some small towns, admired some scenery, and were treated to a beautiful sunset. We went back to the center of Brighton so we could catch our train ride back home to London. to Brighton. However, we went to go catch our train and all of the trains are closed. There's a national railway strike going on right now. So um, Corinne looked it up like a week ago, I think. Or like, it was a couple days, it was like yesterday. A I double okay. checked, I uh, double checked yesterday. She double checked yesterday and there were trains online that said they were running till like 9 or 10 p.m. but apparently not. So we are currently trying to figure out where the bus station is or if there even is a bus station where we can figure out if we can buy a bus ticket. But right now we are a little stressed because apparently it's going to take three and a half hours to get home even if we can catch the bus. But we've been trying to look online for bus tickets and they say that they're all sold out and they're also not showing bus tickets for today. So it's going to be fun <laughs> trying to figure this out. We're also very cold, wet, and tired, and hungry. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, we don't really know what's going to happen, and we're eating a pot of jello in the meantime. Hopefully we can grab the bus, which will take us through a bunch of different transfers yep. through London, and hopefully we can get home. We're waiting till 9.17, and it is 8.40 right now. We can literally walk out and catch the bus, and for some reason comes early. Wish us luck. We're of champions. Yeah. All right, 9.07, 10 minutes before our hopeful bus. Yes, it's okay. It's 9.16 and we see the bus, it's coming. Um, oh my God, please, please, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. Basically, the bus driver was just explaining that they are fully booked and he can't take anybody. So plan B is to take an Uber, which Corinne is looking at right now. $32. <laughs> 132 pounds, pounds for Samir to take us to London. Oh. But right to our doorstep, right? Yes. That's really nice. This is the pickup spot. Yeah. So he's coming here. Okay. In four minutes. In four minutes. Okay. Our first driver just cancelled because his shift is apparently almost over. But it's okay because we're gonna find a new one. Tamim is here. Oh, Tamim, he's here right now. Well, he's two hundred and ten meters away. We gotta ride. <laughs> Try to take the National Express. Right? So uh, yeah, anywhere by London Bridge Station is amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now we're in 40 minutes later. 
and we made it. Woo! Thanks so much for coming along for the ride today. Even with the longer than expected trip back to London, I still really enjoyed visiting Brighton and the Seven Sisters, and I would love to come back one day, maybe with Jake to show him around. And speaking of Jake, tomorrow we are finally reuniting. I'll be leaving London and flying to meet him in Lisbon, Portugal. And as much fun as I've had in London with Corinne these past few days, I am so ready to meet up with Jake and explore Portugal. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.